good afternoon to all the participants. Uh, welcome to Maribor, also from my side. Uh, today, me and my colleague will present you the path from the idea to through publishing to the result, sharing, uh, using the European Open Science Cloud, maybe could be in brackets, because you will see we had some issues finding some solutions there for our specific field. Uh, but I think it will be nice also to address uh, that issues. Uh, so first of all, uh, the outline will be like it's for already from the, uh, you can see it from the title of the talk. Uh, we will introduce ourselves in the first, what we are doing, um, and then Emre will present the perspective from the um, uh, PhD student way uh, and uh, site, and I will present as a postdoc researcher site. And uh, since uh, Brina already mentioned that, uh, so I'm Nate Novak, I'm from the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering, uh, currently appointed as assistant professors, and we are mostly specialists in computational dynamics, crashworthiness, so on the uh, on the mechanical. Uh, side of uh, of the science, let's say. Um, and now I will go uh, give my word to my colleague uh, Yunus Emre, which will present you view of the PhD student. Okay. Thank you very much, Nate. Uh, I'm Yunus Emre Yilmaz. Uh, I'm coming from Turkey. Uh, I'm a third year PhD student. Uh, my research uh, interest is cellular materials, light, uh, lightweight materials, and computer vision. Uh, today, uh, we, we are working in the laboratory, laboratory Latse X. Uh, it is under supervision of Professor uh, Zoran Ren. Uh, I mean, there are three professors, uh, two assistant professors, and two young researchers among us. And one of one, I am one of those uh, young researchers. Uh, these are our lab equipments. We are making high strain rate experiments on uh, cellular materials. We have two high speed cameras uh, and uh, data acquisition uh, system and high uh, high speed high performance computer laboratories. And this is uh, our group. Uh, two years ago, I was introduced for the first time these uh, amazing people. Uh, when I arrived, I, I was coming from different uh, research area. My focus was uh, about precision machine design. Uh, but I had uh, not so much background about cellular materials. Uh, but uh, our group, let's say X, was working uh, around like over 20 years about cellular materials. They had a lot of experience on uh, the cellular materials, like experimental, uh, computational, uh, and uh, they had a lot of publications, uh, a patent, uh, and a lot of digital data about the cellular materials. Uh, this is uh, our, like, uh, Nays know the history better, but I would like to explain the story that we started from uh, relatively basic structures, then we uh, have done experiments and characterization on different uh, cellular materials, and we have collaborated with uh, different uh, institutions. Uh, so uh, as I told you before, uh, this uh, our laboratory, uh, before I came, had a lot of experience. Uh, and uh, in the science, uh, uh, in the research, you have to be very quick uh, to get the information because there are a lot of people try to make publications. So time is very important for us. Uh, today, uh, from my perspective, how in my PhD thesis, how the research idea is converted to results, uh, I will talk about this process and uh, the contribution of the idea of European Open Science Cloud uh, uh, on my uh, on my research, I will uh, specifically focus on the contribution of European Open Science Cloud on my research. Uh, when they ask scientists and people uh, inside the European Open Science Cloud, well, what is the first thing coming to your mind about European Open Science Cloud? Uh, the things that they say about it is co cooperation, collaboration, uh, web of fair data, 
cross-domain and interoperability. And it's basically uh, a portal that you can access and interface with the data uh, in, this, uh, in this portal. Uh, in PhD studies, you are asked to work in a particular uh, area and it is uh, expected from you to contribute uh, something uh, unique in your field. Uh, and to, uh, first of all, you have to define the problem. And uh, our library provided different databases, like such as uh, Science Direct, Web of Science, ProQuest, uh, Scopus, etc. Uh, first thing that I uh, started from was reading uh, relevant articles regarding my topic, which is cellular materials. Uh, in PhD, what is expected, as I mentioned before, is the originality. So, to uh, I have, sh I uh, I had to done originality analysis in my area. So, because we were working on cellular structures, uh, one of the keywords that I used for uh, originality analysis was uh, cellular structures. Uh, I used these keywords uh, and I checked through the different. Uh, uh, different databases, and I tried to find similar uh, work, uh, like is there anything uh, that is uh, already happened around my field. So one of the things, of course, was cellular structures, one of the key words. Uh, then after that, I focused more on triply periodic minimal surfaces, that is specific types of cellular structures. And in our laboratory, we are making high stern rate deformation experiments and impact experiments. This was my another uh, keyword. Uh, from our experience, we know that the direct impact is uh, one of the most efficient way to get some results. Uh, so direct impact was another keyword. Uh, in my area, I'm using digital image correlation. So it was another keyword, and I, will, I should do some computational simulations. Uh, specific, I will work on non-parametric and uh, then special image correlation. These are all the things that will be relevant to me. So I put all of these keywords into search and I check through. Uh, I check through the databases uh, and I came up with. Uh, I have understood that uh, the cellular structures uh, are uh, quite uh, good candidate for shock absorbance because of their unique behavior. And more specifically, uh, TPMS structures, triple uh, periodic minimal surfaces, are, uh, have some additional uh, sparrow properties, such as uh, they are uh, very good against um, stress concentration. And there are not many studies on impact uh, on triple periodic minimal surfaces. And I had to come up with the research question. Uh, our laboratory is generally uh, providing material data for uh, these structures uh, that scientists and engineers are using uh, this data in their computational uh, computations uh, uh, based on the applications. So, because uh, I was specifically interested on uh, TPMS structures, uh, my research question was how to obtain relevant uh, data for these structures. And my hypo hypothesis was, it's a bit specific, but improved non-parametric analysis methodology uh, will handle this and it will give complete set of uh, data for these structures. Uh, I will come to the point here. Uh, the idea of uh, European uh, open science uh, cloud, uh, like sharing the data, uh, came useful for me at this stage because I had to implement all the experiments from the beginning, but our laboratory was working on this topic uh, uh, for a long time. They had a lot of digital data, uh, and I had to develop some computer vision algorithms, uh, but thanks to the data, the uh, digital data that our group provided to me, I didn't have to repeat these experiments, and I saved time and I could uh, directly start working on uh, this digital data without uh, 
waiting for the structures because these are uh, custom made uh, structures we it's not so easy to obtain them so i uh, i have gained a lot of time uh, thanks to this data uh, that provided uh, by our group Uh, I also would like to talk about uh, our lab equipment. Uh, these are our lab equipments. Uh, they are obtained by RIUM, uh, which is uh, the organization uh, uh, like that creates uh, infrastructure for this uh, uh, EOSC, um, Open Science Cloud. Like we can get good quality, uh, valuable data thanks to this equipment. Uh, one of them is uh, we have two high-speed cameras data acquisition system uh, and uh, we are conducting uh, high strain rate experiments with this equipment. Uh, uh, to sum up, um, the EOSC, uh, the contribution of the idea of EOSC uh, helped me saving time. I didn't have to wait for my samples for their arrival. I could already get familiar with computer vision algorithms before arrival of uh, our components. Uh, and uh, we saved money because I, uh, I didn't uh, have to repeat some experiments. And uh, this idea contributes science and uh, I, like uh, scientists can access the target much faster and much efficiently. Uh, at this stage, uh, my colleague Nates will continue with his presentation. Thank you, Emre. Uh, so this was now the point of view of the, let's say, uh, very early career researcher as a PhD student. Now I'm a little bit few years uh, further in my career, so I will add to that um, uh, to that way from research idea to the results, also publication part patent on share and sharing of the results using some of the tools which are available in, in European Open Science Cloud or in generally in open science. So uh, let's say the workflow of uh, research in any field from my opinion is let's say you get one idea then you study state of the art like Emre already presented then you do the research then of course, we are in such a business, such a field of, uh, let's say, uh, work that in the end you have to write something to publish something to prove that you've done something or uh, and so on. And then from writing you get to publication and in, if everything is fine, uh, also you are you like to share that because you achieve that, yeah, you work hard for that. So and. For uh, uh, all these stages, I will show you on our little friend now here, which you can, I will show you a little bit around uh, later, uh, how this basically in two years time we get from idea to the sharing of the results and patenting and stuff like that using all the tools available on the uh, open science field, let's say. So one of the par big part of the European Open Science, Science Cloud is also idea the, about the marketplace where the people can uh, access different resources, different uh, softwares, different on different research domains. Uh, it looks quite nice, but let's say for our engineering fields, field is quite limited still. So there are on this marketplace the resources are. Uh, divided in different uh, scientific domains, but then if you dig uh, deeper, uh, you can see that uh, here on the top uh, that mostly they are on biological, natural sciences, not so many on the engineering. I found for the engineering, material engineering, only one solution which was uploaded by some Finnish university, which I don't know what to do. So this is also, I want to express that here, that there's, there's still uh, 
room for the improvement of these tools, okay? So that uh, more people can use them, that we put all the effort to share also our uh, tools, which I will show you also later, which was uh, one of them was also developed in our, in our laboratory. Uh, and now we come to the research idea, okay? Let's uh, go back two years. In, in spring, we know what happened. Uh, this uh, bad boy uh, comes between, uh, between us, so COVID happens. And then this was maybe a very bad situation for all of us, but uh, in our case, it was good time to work home in quiet, and we get some nice ideas for, for the research. So we get idea about some uh, cell, or, uh, cell or materials, which were introduced already by Emre before. So normal cell or material, let's say the easiest one is if you have cube, uh, which has only the vertices. And then you can put it in that, uh, in that shape. And then you, we have an idea, let's put it in the cylindrical shape. And it was like that. Uh, you can maybe uh, go a little bit around it, you will share it. So this was our idea. Uh, because we never seen the structure like that before, we were thinking maybe can, it can behave nicely, so so on, so on. Uh, we didn't think about any patent and stuff like that in, in the beginning. So we test it, we search the literature, patents, using all the available uh, search um, engines uh, uh, mentioned already before uh, by Emre. Uh, check state of the art of this field and we were in the end quite lucky because something like that didn't exist yet. So that was our, let's say, push towards uh, the, uh, uh, to deep into the research on that kind of structure. Uh, then, of course, we are mechanical engineers. Uh, we like to destroy buildings, then already also destroying them in the, uh, let's say, controlled manner. Uh, so we uh, make this structure and we also, uh, uh, here is a little bit of animation how it was look uh, and uh, uh, in the end you will see that we also fabricate it with 3D printing. And this 3D printing uh, was again um, part of, okay, we are collaborating with some people that uh, um, that providing that to us, but also with Rium project, which is a project of the University of Maribor for acquiring research equipment. You will hear more about it in Thursday morning. Um, allows us to use the equipment, uh, like Emre mentioned, 3D cameras, nano CT scans, uh, 3D printers, for uh, let's say only uh, usage cost, cost, okay? It's, uh, it's freely available for everyone. Uh, and that offers us to build that kind of structure, to test them, and so on. And this Rium equipment, uh, you can find it in web pages of the university or uh, of the faculties. It's divided in, um, also in some areas, maybe similar to the, if you will look for the EOSC uh, marketplace, you can look here for, uh, for uh, uh, equipment available in this project. And then you go to, okay, we are in materials. And then you can see here what is available on the materials. And then you look for a uh, contact person and everything is fine. You can make contact and uh, start collaborating, start using this equipment. Uh, and of course, what is very important in these times, yeah, for the evalu evaluation of the projects, uh, stuff like uh, and uh, similar things uh, don't forget about the acknowledgements of using of this kind of structures so and then using first uh, this open access solutions we arrive to the uh, fabrication uh, fabricated sample which we destroy first in computers and for that usually they are used uh, simulations and um, this is one of the solutions which were, was dev uh, is under development uh, for already more than six years was by our co-worker. Now it comes already so far that the students at the faculty are using that open 
access program for uh, we don't have to buy anymore the very expensive softwares uh, licenses for software but students are using it so and it it could it's perfect candidate let's say what in future i hope that what uh, can be uh, found on the EOSC marketplace um, and it can be used also freely in the industry which uh, provides push up also for the economy of countries and and uh, uh, so on so it ba it's based completely on the open uh, open uh, access access uh, softwares combinations of different put together and it can be freely available to download, download, download from the internet and to use it in the companies. Uh, of course, if you want to run simulations, you need to powerful. You need to have powerful computers. Also about that, you will hear something in the morning of Thursday. Uh, it's also same principle: open access to the supercomputer power. Uh, which is uh, um, uh, the most uh, the most powerful public sub supercomputer is installed at, uh, as part of the uh, University of Maribor in our, our computational center, um, and uh, the computing capacities are available according to open research infrastructure. So again, maybe you can go to EOSC platform. You find some solutions there. How to run? Uh, uh, let's say simulations, your code from MATLAB, etc., on your, uh, on this supercomputer. Okay, and now from the research, so we did experiments, we destroy things, I didn't put you, uh, put here the videos of uh, real life experiments, so also research equipment for testing of this kind of materials is available in that, that kind of project. And then when you gather all the results, you become to write it. So then you have to decide if there is something is really unique, it's smart to first to check for the patents. So if you publish before and then acquire a patent, it's uh, not really sure that uh, uh, you, will, you will get a patent. So we first submitted the application for the patent. Um, uh, we, and then we uh, received uh, Slovenia. We were granted Slovenian patent, and I hope soon it will be granted also the European patent. And then we are by the writing and where to put the data, you know. And, and we, again, we are here where on the engineering side of view, there are not many uh, uh, common practices of where and how to store the data. There's, they are on different fields. Like I think it's the same proportion and there, as there are solutions on EOSC uh, marketplace. Uh, they are also here for the engineering. They are very uh, rare uh, moments where you can find some data from the engineers that they are put on the, some data repositories. This will hopefully change in the future, but still in engineering it's very, uh, let's say even in our office, every uh, researcher has its own logic how to save the data. And if you combine the people from all over the world, which are saving the data, but by your own way, it could be completely mess. So uh, this could be also an uh, 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 issue for the future. About the writing, you are, I don't, you are a PhD student. You are maybe more capable of using tools uh, of this. Of course, uh, some of using LaTeX, Word. Word. Um, I, I would like to give you also in between some practical um, practical advices, how to write, how to how publish, and stuff like that. So mostly we are using Word together with Grammarly. It's nice for checking the English, then Mendeley for references, and EndNote, and then for uh, reviewing the data, Excel, and MATLAB. And these are all the, uh, all the softwares that we are using for, for the writing, OK? And with this, you can do more or less all the magic. Uh, and then we come to the preprint options. So when you write the article, you are, you are happy with them, then you come to a preprint. Uh, I don't know if you have any experience yet, but recently uh, uh, we have a little bit bad uh, situation, but I will explain you later. So there are 
preprint available preprint repositories for uh, mostly for chemistry, biology, health science, psychology, economics, social sciences. You see, and there's two of them general. Again, no engineering. Okay, we, we are really in lack of this in the engineering point of view. But recently, uh, you hear maybe about is SSRN. It's a repository which is offered by the Elsevier. When you submit the article, there is a small tick then there uh, where you can decide that you want to publish preprint before the uh, before before even before the review process. Okay, and our co-author did a little bit mistake. He missed the, that tick, and recently we. Uh, our preprint was published, and in one day, it came from Elsevier to Scopus, and ResearchGate take it, and it was published as a full text on ResearchGate. So be careful. Uh, this is practical advice, and we need then three to four days to solve it, Elsevier to take it back. But still, there is available. Uh, uh, I checked yesterday in Scopus. There is still preprint available, but only abstract, not full text anymore. Because, okay, it's nice to give preprint open to everybody in, in, in let's say, in, in ideal world, okay? But in the other side of the globe, you have some people waiting for it to steal the idea, to publish before you, and then you are not original anymore. Okay, so be careful in these modern times uh, when you, when and where and how you want to publish this preprint. Uh, and then, if everything went well, if you don't want or you put preprint or not, you come then to publish. Uh, recently, in the last years, the open access comes more and more in uh, in its let's say, needed for all the evaluation, and it's, let's say, it's, it's fair that everybody has access to the uh, public-funded research, let's say. And then you have to choose the journal. It's a tricky story. Uh, you have to rely mostly, I would suggest, on your supervisors, but we, there are some solutions where to look for these journals, and then you choose the journal, and uh, we are really happy if here is open access on the Science Direct that you can read it, everybody can read it, you can share the article. And this is then, you see then, it's, it was exactly two years from March 2020, when, uh, from idea to March 2022, to publications of this kind of material. Uh, and of course, uh, if article is published in the open access, you don't have to worry about where, when, and how can you share with the article. So what I usually do, um, research, there were some issues with the research gate previous years because some authors were uploading the um, subscription articles to it, PDF, full, full text of articles to it, but with uh, open access, uh, it's, this is not a problem. From my opinion, if you're young, you, um, you don't have maybe a ResearchGate account yet, you can connect with uh, people that are working on the same field. It's nice to share the data, to observe what others do, to have some chat. It's like social media for, for scientists. Uh, then also, uh, recently quite popular is also to, uh, to make it in, uh, to, uh, to advertise uh, that in LinkedIn, where you can also connect, uh, network with other, uh, with other researchers. And uh, res uh, in Slovenia, uh, may probably in also other countries, in terms of uh, the research projects, uh, you have to share, present the results of your uh, projects uh, on the web pages. So these are, could be. Uh, personal web pages, but of course, LinkedIn ResearchGate has high reach. Nobody will type in Google what you, uh, what you, uh, your name and then your web, uh, personal web page. It's better on the LinkedIn. Uh, 
in the end, I will like also because well, I think the best sharing of your research is uh, the conferences. I want to point out uh, about these fake conferences. Please be very careful. careful. Because using Google, uh, uh, here I type oxetics. This means uh, oxetic are name of these materials. Okay, any any word you type in the Google, and you name it conference next to it, it will find some good conference for you. And this is oxetic, so this is our oxetic materials. Oxetic conference. Okay, fine. For first hit, a nice conference in September in Paris, in Rome I think uh, also other. It's and then you check, this one is fake, this one is fake, and you see there are different um, 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 different links. And then you check that in the back is the same organization, uh, which I'll show you later. And I don't know how how you check that. Sometimes on the first view, it's maybe good to check committees of this conference. But sometimes they are also taking names of uh, their new uh, scientists on these fields, and they are just putting their names on it without uh, them them uh, know how to, uh, w uh, why they are here. Uh, but be careful about especially about this organization okay there are some others but this one is biggest our co-worker at the faculty of uh, mechanical engineering had uh, it was nice conference in bali uh, organized by this organization and they were from all different fields in one hotel uh, small uh, lecture room and they were talking uh, they were presenting and you get the confirmation and this is it but from that kind of conference, you will not get nothing. You will, uh, you will just pay them, and this is it. This is business. Um, and this was also uh, I checked before. You go on that uh, their web page. They have also a conference of open science. Probably they don't even know what is open science. Then uh, they're uh, when they're organizing that. And if you will have time, maybe look on this uh, YouTube video uh, inside the fake science factory. It's very uh, beneficial for young people to to get some cautions of uh, 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 what to do, what not to do, and maybe rely on your supervisors to ask them how the, from their experience. Okay, so to conclude, um, you see that from engineering point of view, the, there are not so many solutions on uh, European Open Science Cloud yet. We have to work on this. Um, and uh, but anyway, the idea is good. As Emre said, you can spare a lot of time, money, uh, not developing stuff that it's already developed. Um, and I think it's useful in all kinds, uh, all areas of the science. So we will be happy now to uh, answer all of your questions. I hope that it was something that you present. Uh, uh, the, Expect from us. We, uh, it was first time for us to uh, to present, let's say, on our, our non-scientific field uh, of the research. Uh, of the research. Uh, so thank you for your attention.